Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. My name is Olivia. This is my very first floss tube video, so it could end up being a very hot mess because nobody tells you exactly how nerve wracking it is to film a video. And if I have completed the video and it's uploaded to YouTube, then I, I, I did it, I made it. And um, hopefully it's not too all over the place that you can hear me talking. Um, I guess I will just, I'll try my best and hopefully it, it all works out. So, like I said, my floss tube channel is Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. My name is Olivia. Uh, today is January 11th, 2019. I live in the great state of Oregon in an area that is referred to as the Willamette Valley. I am married. My husband and I just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary this past November. We have two fantabulous kids. Uh, my daughter Allison is a senior in high school and my son Ethan is seventh grader in middle school. Uh, and when I told them that I was actually gonna do my floss tube video today, they were both kind of shocked. I could see my son was a little bit nervous. So I don't really know what he thought was gonna happen because I don't think I'm gonna be like as popular as the people that they watch. Um, so hopefully I don't embarrass them too much. Um, it's fine. Uh, so anyway, um, I, as my name, as my channel name suggests, I am a quilter. I have been quilting for probably 17 years now. Uh, my grandma taught me how to, you know, sew on the machine and, and, you know, basically taught me the basics for beginning quilting um, and I'm forever grateful to her for that because it opened up this whole world for me that I you know I didn't know was here and I've had a wonderful time creating you know things for my home and you know making making all the stitchy fun quilty things I also am a quilter by trade um, I have been doing long arm quilting for 11 10 11 years now um, I really enjoy it. I enjoy it when it's busy and I bite my nails when it's slow. Um, I, I do enjoy doing it. I also have an Etsy shop where I make grime guards and needle minders and table runners and iPad stands and just kind of a, a bunch of like mishmash that I think might appeal to different, you know, people. I enjoy doing that. Um, I am returning to the world of cross stitch. Um, I first learned to cross stitch when I was 11, 12. My, my grandma taught me. She um, had cross stitched my whole, like the more of my childhood I can remember, you know, going to her house and she was always working on some project. Um, and so she taught me how to stitch. And so the first thing that I made, and I have it because she gave it to me this past summer, is uh, a little magnet and you can buy them. I think you can still buy them in the store. I, you know, I see them, they, they're an ornament or a magnet. And so the very first thing that I stitched was this little chicken. And apparently, according to my grandma, it took me two and a half months to stitch it and she wanted to wring my neck by the time I was done. So, but um, I persisted and made my little chicken. And she hung this little guy on her refrigerator all the way up until this past summer when um, she discovered that I was collecting chickens. And so she gave, she gave me my little, my little hen. And I love it and so now it's on my refrigerator and I always, I always get a kick out of you know, seeing it hanging up there. Um, but I didn't, it wasn't like I you know, immediately started stitching all the things. I, um, I did small stuff, you know, like bookmarks and maybe I'd make like a tiny little, you know, frame thing for like my grandma's birthday or like my mom's birthday or my grandma's, my other grandma's birthday. Um, and one of, one of the things that I, I stitched and that I still have is, is this little, um, magnet. And I think you could just, um, buy it at, it was probably Michael's or even Craft Warehouse at the time. And so I really only thought that the world of cross stitch was dimensions. And then there was that one magazine that my grandma got. It was like, um, 
American cross stitch and needlework or country cross stitch and needlework. And so that is the only thing that I thought was cross stitch. I had no idea that the, there was prairie schoolers and primitive needles and, um, oh, there's one more. I can't think of it, but I love it. Oh, and um, Blackbird Designs. Had no idea that any of those existed when I um, got married and took up cross stitch again, you know, because I'd only dabbled in it when I was, you know, teenager, um, just kind of like, oh, I'm gonna stitch today and I'm gonna make a little ornament or a bookmark or, you know, whatever. So um, when I got married, then it was like, oh, I wanna make something for my house. And I should have pulled it off the wall, but right there is the very first um, cross stitch, like giant cross stitch I ever did. Um, and it took me, I started it, we got married in November, and I started it in December, and it took me about eight months to do. It was not a dimensions kit. It was out of that like country, country, um, American country cross stitch. I see their stuff on eBay because you, the place went out of business like in the early 2000s. Cause I know that's when my grandma quit cross stitching was right about that time that they quit publication. And I wish I had some of those magazines because um, every once in a while you're like on Pinterest and I'll see like a prairie schooler that I absolutely love. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this so much, I want it. And then you go and look and it's from this magazine that's been out of print for, you know, the last 20 years. And so it's, it's really a bummer. Had I known that the prairie schoolers and the primitive needles of the world existed, I never ever would have left cross stitch. But I only thought that cross stitch was dimension kits that you picked up at Walmart, at Michaels, at Craft Warehouse, had no idea, no, no idea. Until one day I was on Instagram and somebody posted those, um, the monthly cottages that Country Cottage Needlework uh, puts out. And I was like, what is this? I stink and love it. What is this? What, is this a cross? This is a cross stitch pattern. Like, where did you get this? And the gal's like, oh my God, I got one, two, three stitch. So I immediately stop everything I'm doing, pop onto one, two, three stitch, and the world exploded with all of this wonderful cross stitch. And I have been here ever since. So thank goodness for Instagram. <laughs> because it has been a lot of fun. Um, prior to coming back into cross stitch, I uh, did a lot of hand embroidery. And so I had, you know, quit doing cross stitch, started quilting, and then it was probably like maybe a year, two years after I learned how to quilt, um, I noticed my grandma was doing hand embroidery. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool because I never, I never lost that need to have something in my hand stitching. And I, I liked that. You know, it's one thing to stitch something on the sewing machine, but it's another when you, you know, you're stitching it in hand and it's like you're, you're connecting with um, all the other stitchers down the line of your family. And so, um, so that is what I was doing. Um, I, I've made a lot of hand embroidered quilts, but the one thing, you know, you know, with hand embroidery, you, you know, you, you make it and you either make it into a pillow or you make it into a quilt, or you can make it into a table runner, but I don't, I don't like to because I feel like it can get dirty. Um, and so I was starting to get bored with it and I was finding that I was setting it down and I wasn't touching it for weeks and months. And I felt bad about that because I wanted to finish it. You know, the hand, especially if you're making a hand embroidered quilt, there's a lot of money that goes into it. I mean, you have to buy, not only do you buy the fabric, you buy all the threads and, and then, you know, there's a lot of time into it and you don't want to just stop. So I felt bad that I was losing that passion. And so cross stitch came along at the right time. I have totally been enjoying it. However, the one thing that I noticed when I came back into cross stitch was you could take what I knew about stitching and stick it in like the, the eye of a needle. 
because cross-stitchers talk this whole other language, just like quilters do. And so when you are like on Instagram and they're like, oh, I FFO'd this today, you're like, what does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, I knew what whips meant, um, but I didn't know what like some of the, the chatter was, like the speaking. And so one day, I think it was actually really close to when Priscilla and Chelsea uploaded their first video. And I was on Instagram and I was flipping through the pictures and this one lady who was a quilter like me had her cross stitch pattern out. And then of course you could see like her TV and she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm spending my Saturday stitching with Priscilla and Chelsea on floss tube. And I'm like, floss tube, what's floss tube? So I didn't want to look like an idiot. And so I asked my daughter, I'm like, what is floss tube? Have you ever heard of that? She's like, no, I've never heard of that. And then she looked at the picture and she's like, well, mom, that's YouTube. She's like, just go into YouTube, type in floss tube and see what comes up. So I did and the first video was Priscilla and Chelsea. And I totally fell down that rabbit hole because I love floss tube. Um, I watch it when I'm sewing. I'll watch it when I'm stitching. Um, it's just kind of a nice way to connect with other, even though, you know, we don't see each other face to face. It's just kind of nice to see, oh, there are other cross stitchers out there in the world. I'm not the only one because none of my friends cross stitch. The ones that used to totally dimensions and they're like, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. And um, so they quit. And anyway they i keep trying to get them i'm like oh look what i made this is so cool and they're like oh that is so cool and and i try to get them i'm like come on join join the dark side come to cross stitch but so far they're they're holding steady as cross stitcher or uh, quilters and that's okay i'll get them to my side eventually um so i know i'm probably leaving a whole lot of stuff out um but in my other videos, um, I will hopefully, you know, add more uh, about what's going on in my life. Um, I, um, because I've watched like so many different floss tubers and I'm like, okay, how do they do it? And then you're like, okay, the intro, okay, talking about themselves. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And then, you know, they just kind of like pew pew every which way. So I just figure I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna sit down and I'm gonna muddle through it. And I might be all over the place. Um, I, might, I hope I'm not talking too fast. Um, yeah, I just hope I'm not screwing this up. Anyway, so let's talk about what I have been stitching. Um, I started, so for Christmas, I got this amazing box of um, charts for my sister-in-law. Uh, she asked me, she's like, oh, you know, give me some ideas for Christmas. And I'm like, well, I have this wish list. I want two, three stitch. I could give you that. That would give you, like, awesome ideas. And so she went on there, and she said it was the most funnest Christmas shopping she'd had in a long time. So that made me happy because when I opened up this box, it was like, you know, like when they flip open, like, this box and the light rays shoot out. That's exactly what it was. I was so excited to have all of these awesome charts. And one of the charts was, I'm just going to make some crinkling noises here for a second, was this um, Little House Needleworks Winter ABCs. Um, I have seen it pop up a lot. Um, I had put it in my shopping cart. I can't tell you how many times I put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. And then it was like, oh, well, it's charted with all these, you know, fancy floss and classic color works. Put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. And finally, I had convinced myself um, at the beginning of December, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy it in January and I'm just gonna DMC it because it does have a DMC conversion and I love DMC, I don't have anything against it. And then I got it for Christmas and I was super happy. So I started this December 31st and, and stitched on it while the ball dropped. And I actually finished it. So here it is. And I hope it is showing up okay. It's really hard to show the whole thing because it's so long. Um, but yeah, I finished it yesterday afternoon. I had a really good time stitching this. It is on um, 32 count lamb's wool Joblin even weave. Um, the reason why I stitched it on that 
uh, because originally I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy some of that minty colored fabric for it. And then of course, you know, like everybody else after Christmas, you're broke. You're like, I can't afford to go and spend a fortune on fabric. So you're like, what do I have? And I had bought this, um, I had um, sold some patterns on eBay. And so I had started collecting for Santa's Village, um, Country Cottage Needlework Santa's Village. And so of course you need this giant piece of fabric because the dimensions of it is just, it's just over the, like in between, I think it's like 18, 18 by something, and then it jumps up to like 20, 27 by 36. Yeah, 27 by 36, yeah. So it just jumps up, it's just right there, just jumps up. So I had this 11 inch strip of fabric, and I thought, I'm just gonna stitch my winter ABCs on that. So, stitched on it, it took me, I started December 31st and I finished January 10th. So it took me two-ish weeks. And I, I only really stitched on it at night. Um, so yeah, it probably took me, well, not quite two weeks, 10 days, maybe. Um, but one of the things I noticed right off the bat was the, the alphabet here. So in the, it's charted for white. And also one of the reasons why I chose the Joblin was because the in the reviews, it said that white really popped on it. White did not pop on it. And I was really upset. I'm not like upset. I mean, I was irritated because I had bought this giant piece of fabric for Christmas stitching and winter stitching and the white doesn't even, didn't even show up. So I recharted or um, swapped out the white because I think it was like 3865 and I stitched it in DMC 645 and then I decided every once in a while on certain letters I would do it in teal or like this aqua teal and it was let me look at my notes here 503 yeah DMC 503 and then the white it's I mean it's showing up white but it is actually a very light, light blue. Um, and that is 37.56. But yeah, it's, it's light blue, but it looks white on this fabric. So it was perfect. It all turned out. Um, I am going to finish it on a um, long piece of board. Haven't bought the board yet, but um, I'm gonna do it on a, a long piece of, of wood that I paint. Um, and I think I'm gonna do like a, a rustic greenish background because it's gonna hang in this room here. And this room is like, I mean, you, as you can see, it's dark baseboards and dark wallpaper. And it's actually gonna go over here on the side of my kitchen cabinets. It's just gonna be right on the end there. And then I have the other ones. I also got the other ones for, my, for Christmas. Um, and so I'm just gonna, once I finish them, it's just gonna swap out seasonally. And I'm really, really, really excited. And I can't wait to get all of those stitched up this year. Um, one of the other things that I have been working on is, this is um, Glitter Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. I'm doing it on, um, what did I do with it? Oh, it's a 32 count raw silver Belfast. And I just really love the glitter. Totally in love with the glitter. I'm so excited. Um, during the Christmas season, and I know you see this and you're like, oh, she still has her Christmas tree up. Um, that is actually my seasonal tree. So what I do is, is like right now it's got winter stuff on it. And so in a, like another like month and a half, as soon as it gets through the middle of February, I am going to, um, it'll become spring. And then it'll become 4th of July, like summery 4th of July. And then it goes to like a harvest and then it's Halloween and then it's Thanksgiving and then it's um, Christmas. But during the Christmas season, this tree is decorated with all the vintage ornaments that my grandma gave me and some that I've collected and some that have been given to me by, you know, my quilty friends because they know that I have this vintage tree. 
and it's all in these um, it's all in these colors so this is actually when it's finished it's gonna hang right there where my last name is this is my last name it's gonna hang right here because vintage tree and it and then the quilts that are out here are kind of like vintagey theme so really excited about getting that done um, that is kind of in my rotation so now that I'm finished with um, winter ABC's which I forgot to bring it out here I'll have to um, I'll have to go get it um, anyway so once I finish now that I'm done with my winter ABC's I've started on another winter one and when I when I'm finished with that one I'm gonna start on glitter village again and do house number three so also another one that I have been working on and this one it's probably gonna throw off a massive glare so let me see hang on Prickles. Hang on, hang on. this is my first Haid and it is a uh, story keep simply meant to be um, it is it's supposed to be so this is obviously supposed to be Sally, and this is supposed to be Jack Skellington from um, Nightmare Before Christmas, but I actually think he looks like Ghost Rider. And I love this. I can't wait to have it done, even though it's gonna take me the rest of my life. Um, but this one, I'm gonna try to work on it like towards the end of each month. Um, it'll get like a couple of day days of you know attention. I'm so excited about this one. I started it, um, it was in like May, I think it was in May. It was, um, it was act I was actually able to get it by Crafty Lisa because she had finished hers and she showed it in one of her videos and I was like, ah. So I, luckily, luckily there was a sale. It was like 50% off so it only ended up being like four bucks. So, um, and this is my progress so far. Uh, so his his head's starting to come together. This is where his the bottom, like his mouth, is right here. And then, so I'm gonna hopefully this month we'll get him more filled in, um, and then um, drop down and start working on Sally. And the good thing is this whole section right here is black DMC 310. So that should this part will go fairly quick. But this is like massive confetti. But I'm absolutely loving him. It's totally Ghost Rider. Um, and I'm doing it on 18 count Ada that I just picked up in the tube from Michaels. So easy peasy. My next whip, my next one that's in my my rotation is Autumn at Hawkrun Hollow. I know that. It's been around, a lot of people have seen it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And this one, this one I'm really sad to say has been sitting in its bag for over a year. I have not touched it. It's a little bit wrinkly um, and I really need to get back to this because I love it, I love it. But this is what I have done so far. Um, this is a 40 count vintage country mocha that I picked up from 123 Stitch and it's all DMC. So I really, I really love it. I need to get back to it. It's going to be in my whip rotation. It'll just kind of get some love as the year goes on. It won't be done this year unless something amazing happens and I just fly through it, but it won't be done this year. The other whip that I have in my rotation is Halloween at Hawk Run Hollow. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And if you haven't guessed by my name, my channel, I love Halloween. So if you do not love Halloween, you probably will not love me. Um, because I, I love decorating for the fall. I love making for the fall. I love sewing for the fall. I love Halloween. I love autumn. I love pumpkins. Um, I love when I can find pumpkins and chickens all together in like a, a some sort of a mishmash. Um, but yeah, if 
if you don't love Halloween, you you won't love me because I stitch Halloween all through the year. I don't I don't care if it's April. You're going to see some Halloween. And if you you've come over here from Instagram to check out this video, you already know. You already know. Um so here is my progress so far. Um I I worked on this. I think I started it like this was finished. I finished this one back in September, September of 2017, and then this I worked on in March, and it took me the whole month, the whole month to stitch that, this little box. So I got to get back to that. It is also on 40 count vintage country mocha. I love vintage country mocha. I've stitched a lot of stuff in vintage country mo mocha. I'm just really, I love it. I would stitch so many more things on vintage country mocha. And the last thing. That is in my whip rotation, but I'm actually going to work on this until it's completely finished, is Prairie Schoolers Winter Wind. I got this um, for Christmas in the Box of Awesomeness. And I started it last night, and that is all I have um, completed. So that's just going to be the banner, and it's going to say winter. Um, so this started, so this particular material here, this fabric, started out as 32 count platinum Lugana, but it was really, I thought it was more like, I mean, when you think of platinum, you think of like whitish with a little bit of gold in it. Um, and so I bought it thinking that it would just be a great piece to have to be able to stitch, you know, whatever on it. And it came and it was just this dingy, dishwatery, like, whitish gray it was not it just wasn't attractive so yesterday while I put in the last stitches on winter ABC's IT and coffee dyed it using Priscilla and Chelsea's method um, you can't really tell it was that dingy gray I mean it it kind of you know old and crusty did up and of course you know I started in the top corner and it's I never can get my stuff completely centered and and that's okay that's okay um, okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of finishes and then, um, yeah, I think that'll be, that'll be it for my first video. I might show you a couple of my, my plans that I'm going to do this year, but so this, and I think it's going to throw off a super glare. How about right there? Uh, this one was Heart and Hand by Brenda Jurey and I started this. January 1st and I finished it it was like the very end of the month it was such a fun thing to stitch I totally enjoyed it I could not put it down even if I wanted to it was just so much fun the only change it had something to do I think there was like some sort of a border down here and I completely took it off and I bumped the words up mostly because I wanted it to fit in this frame um, and I can't remember what the border was. I don't remember if this whole thing was blocked in or if it was just the one border, but, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun stitching this and I, and it was a stitch along, but I don't remember who, I don't remember who was hosting it, but I'm, I think you can look it up. It was like heart and hand Sal or something like that. It was a lot of fun to stitch. And then one of the other things that I finished last year was this Lila Studios, and I don't remember what the name of it was, but I will, um, I'll look it up, and I will, I'll actually um, put, I guess it's called show notes, and so what I'll do is I'll put all of the notes, I'll put a link in the description block, description box to my blog. And I'll have all of the information on what what all of these are in case you are interested in doing it for yourself. But I stitched this um, because my husband and I celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary. We were married in 1998 and our initials. This one was a lot of fun to stitch too. I know I changed some of the colors, but I don't remember. It's been so long now. Anyway, that was a lot of fun to stitch. Took me like a couple of weeks. I think I worked on it in like April. And then this, Lantern Lane. 
So this one, it was a stitch along with Priscilla and Chelsea. And I bought the pattern and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna whip this out. It's not gonna take me very long to stitch. Holy cow, this took forever. That house, it's like never ending. And I, t so it had down here, it had this border, but I took it off. I was like, I'm done. When I got like over here, I'm like the end. Um, and I just put it in a frame this year. Um, I picked the frame up at Michael's. It was just one of their, um, it's like their everyday value. And I, I, I had, so in two, 2017, I had finished all of this. And then I had finished like to right there. And I just had this, but I had run out of the green. It was the, one of the DMC variegated. And, and so I had picked up the thread and all I had to do was finish this. And it just sat and sat and sat and sat. And then finally I, I was in between projects and I just sat down and I finished it in like three hours. So I have my initials here, O and G in the same red. This was also a um, DMC variegation. And I'll put all of that information in my blog. I'll just pop a link down below and you know, just pop over and see what I did. And the last thing I finished last year is this. This is Prairie Schooler. It is one of the Santa House. I think it's just called Santa's House. I think it might be like Santa's House 2010 or something like that. Um, did it all I did it in the called for and I really like that red it's like um, classic color works Cupid I just I really love the variegation in that red was awesome I stitched it on it was like um, stormy something I'll I'll make sure that I stick that over in uh, my blog too and then I just picked up a wreath from uh, Hobby Lobby, I think, and I just hot glued flower, uh, poinsettias and made the bow myself. I like it. It turned out really good. I still have it. It's still hanging up over here just because I like to look at it, but it's got to come down. Um, oh, okay. So one of the things I forgot to mention was this year I am also going to be stitching on let me get the first one here well I'm not really sure which one's the first one. Oh no it's this one uh, Country Cottage Needlework Santa's Village so I had seen so many finishes of this on Pinterest and every time it popped up I was like oh I need to stitch that I love it I just absolutely love it and um, but then when you go and you're like yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna buy all 12 of the patterns and then you're like putting them in there and I'm like I want the fancy floss too and then I'll throw in the fabric and then it's like holy crap it's expensive and I can't do that so you're like chucking things out of your cart and then so I decided what I would do is I would just buy like one or two of the patterns and then you know start stitching on it and then just kind of add the patterns as needed and then of course I went on eBay and I managed to find a couple of them that weren't very much, they were used. So, and this is totally out of order, um, but I got Poinsettia Place. There we go. And Christmas Tree Farm. And this is the, I think this is the first one you start with. And Candy Cane Cottage. And North Pole, the North Pole Post Office. And then I found, I just got the two, the first two buttons. It's like a little cardinal and then just a star. And I'm going to do it on, this is the Joe Blen um, that I did um, Winter ABCs with. But I'm tempted to um, tea and coffee dye this because I don't know that the white's gonna pop on it because it didn't, so the white definitely was not popping on this and so I think maybe I just need to kind of help it because I'm not buying any more fabric for it. That's the one that I'm gonna stitch it on and that's it. So it's a project that I'm planning on to work 
work on all through the year and hopefully have it finished at Christmas time. It's also the one project that originally I was going to do um, Little House Needleworks Early Americans. And then this one, I just like, you know, I really like this. I, and I was feeling all Christmassy. I'm like, I need some more Christmas stitching. So I went ahead and went with this. And then as soon as I finish this one in Glitter House or whichever one I finish first, I'll sell the patterns on eBay and then um, buy Early Americans and start on that. But I'm doing it all in DMC. Is that everything? No, I think that's it. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Hang on a second. So in the box of wonderfulness, and I won't show you the whole box of wonderfulness. I'll, I'll save it. I'll just kind of like, that way I have some haul because I don't really get a lot of haul. Um, so my sister-in-law went on my wish list and one of the, so I have some marabilias and I, I love marabilia. I've done one. Um, and in my next video, I'll, I'll pull some of those out and I'll show you. But the one that I first stitched, the only one that I've done so far, is Trick or Treat, Trick or Treat Fairy. Um, I think it's Trick or Treat Fairy. Or it's not Halloween Fairy, it's, I think it's Trick or Treat Fairy. I think, I don't know. Um, and I had a lot of fun stitching her. She's beautiful, I love her. Um, during the Halloween season, she um, is over on that wall above my sewing machine. And so I always got to look at her and she's so glittery and pretty and I just love her. So um, one of the marabilias that was on my wish list is this one. And this is Queen of Freedom. Oh, I love her. I really, 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 really want to stitch her this year. And I would like to be able to stitch her like in the spring. But she is on a giant piece of fabric. Um, However, last night I was talking to Linda Jo, Pretty Southern, on our Midnight Rendezvous, and she gave me um, the name of a place where you can just say how much you want and they'll cut it for you so you don't have any excess and it's not a million dollars. So I'm gonna do that for this. I'm gonna stitch her all in the DMC. Yeah, cause she's all DMC. And then um, she doesn't take too many beads, but I'll probably just stitch her first and then add the beads later on. So there's that. Um, and then this is Forest Goddess. Love her. I'm excited about this one. This was the first, so when I was, you know, looking for Marabellias, this one was the first one that caught my eye. I just, I just really love the colors in her dress. Love it. I keep calling her Autumn Goddess because those are autumn colors, but she's the Forest Goddess. So she also, which is really weird, she's also on a big piece. Like she's just over that cusp where you can't do like a 18 by whatever, you have to do like a fat quarter. And then my last one is, this is Snow Queen and I, I love her. I've seen her stitched up a couple of different ways and I just love her, she's amazing. She's expensive to kit up, so she's gonna be one of those ones where I'm gonna slowly kit her up. She probably won't be stitched this year. It's gonna be like 2020 project. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to stitch her. Definitely wanna do it on some sort of a dark blue like that. Love, love it, I'm excited, excited. And then I got, um, this is the Halloween Fairy by Marabilia. And so this one I'm gonna probably start first because she is all kitted up with all the called for floss and the fabric and the beads. Super excited. So yeah, she's probably gonna be my March stitch. I always get like in the Halloween mood in March and I don't, I don't really know why that is because it's March. You should be doing spring bunnies and all that other kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't know. I'm just like Halloween. Um, and then I'll show you two more charts out of the box of awesomeness. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to these. I'm excited to have them. They've been on my wish list for a while. When I do do them, I know I am going to do them in DMC because I looked up how much the NPI silks were and had a small stroke. Um, but this one is the Chatelaine uh, Autumn, Autumn, Autumn Seasons Garden. And I love it. 
I'm totally excited about it. I, I definitely want to stitch it, but this also will probably be a, you know, 2020 start. Because it's on a humongous piece of fabric. Humongous. And then the last one is this um, medieval, the medieval herb garden. And she's beautiful. I'm obsessed with medieval. I just love it. Love it. I like to watch documentaries about it. I just really like it. It's fun. Well, I think that's about it. I hope that I have a decent size video. I'm sure there are stuff that I've completely forgotten to mention. Um, hopefully I can edit this. Uh, Linda Jo, Pretty Southern, during our Midnight Rendezvous, showed me kind of the ropes of how to edit a video. So once I'm done with this, I'm gonna pop over and try my best to edit it. And then I'm gonna figure out the whole process of uploading to YouTube. And so if you're seeing it, I did it. I'm here. If not, this will forever be in my phone. Never viewed. Um, and I know I'm forgetting something. I know when I stop this and I watch it back, I'll be like, dang it, why didn't I say that? Um, so my spiel, my closing spiel. So if you, you know, want to see what I'm up to every day, uh, well, I guess not every day cause I've been kind of lazy about posting lately. Um, I'm always on Instagram, pumpkin hollow quilts. Um, I am also on Facebook. There's like pumpkin hollow quilting, which is kind of linked up to my blog. My blog is pumpkin hollow quilting. Um, I think that's about it. Pinterest, I think I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I'm basically like some form of Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Um, so you can always find me everywhere. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave them in the description box. If you like what you see and you're still here, uh, please subscribe to my channel, like it, tell your friends. Um, I think I don't think I'll be back every week because I just don't feel like I have enough stuff to talk about. Um, and I'm trying to figure out if like two to three weeks is a better time span for me. And I'm leaning more towards like three weeks. So it'll be somewhere between like two and three because my husband's like, well, you should do it every week. But I just don't have, you know, like I usually work on a project, especially like AB, winter ABCs, I mean, I started it and I worked all the way through till I finished it. And the only ones that are like whips are the ones where you work on like a block and then you're like, I'm done, I'm working on something else now. Um, so I'm thinking, I really am thinking that it'll probably be more towards three weeks. Um, yeah, because uh, I don't know how long winter wind will take me so I might just barely have that one done. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll kind of like see what I have at the end of like one week and then be like, well, maybe two. And then maybe like somewhere between two and three is probably going to be my video. And also I have to wait for my husband to like go do something so that, I, you know, he's not like walking behind me like, what are you doing? Um, so, and I, like I said, I probably forgot a whole bunch of stuff too. And I'm just blathering now. So if you like the video, please subscribe. If you have any questions, comment section below. I will put all what I've talked about, like what I've used, the linens, where you can get the patterns, charts. I'll just put that on my blog. That's just, that's easy. I can do that while my video is uploading. Um, and so I'll, hopefully, if I do not, if the link is not down below because I can't figure out how to do it yet, it is pumpkin hollow quilting blogspot.com and you can just buzz over there and you can you know I always post like finished stuff what I've been working on I don't think I've posted since before Christmas but that's only because I've just haven't really had much um, I've only now sat down and looked at my sewing machine I had to make some custom rope bowls so my sewing machine and I spent some quality time together um, and later on today, my quilt machine is going to get my undivided attention for a little while. Um, but yeah, so you can always find me on Instagram, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Um, if you're coming, like if you don't know who I am and you've just now found me and you go to Instagram, tell me like I found you from YouTube. So I know that more than five people have watched me. Um, anyway, so I guess that's about it. I think I'm just 
blathering now. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks. I hope that you get lots of fun stitching done, that you're stitching on something that you love, um, that you're making, doing, baking, all the things. Um, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.